The Double by Tris McGill Read by Trillian Skinner Hair to Air, Part 2 So then, Sir Herbert said, pushing the door open. This'll be your room while you're here, or at least for tonight. Lord Lawrence ain't sending you back to the docks in your condition. The room was spacious and well lit, with natural light shining through large windows. There was a fireplace with logs burning in the hearth, soft upholstered chairs and a velvet couch, a round dining table with a couple of chairs, a chandelier, several lamps, a spacious bed with soft, clean linens spread over it. The rug was silk. The rug was silk. There is a bath through that door, Herbert said, gesturing to a door on the far side of the room. It is hot and cold water. Mind the hot water, though. It'll scald you if you're not careful. Kieran glared at the knight as he passed his shoulder, heading toward the bath. You threatened my life and my mother's life on the docks. Now you're worried about me scalding my fingers, Kieran snapped. Herbert raised his brow over his shoulder, but didn't look offended. Tides change. When we were on the docks, you and an urchin making a young man I'm sworn to protect look like a desperate, wretched whore. Now you're the Merc's guest and I do what he tells me, Herbert said, holding his hand out for the cloak. And the Merc told me that I'm your assistant until further notice. Who is it I look like? Kieran asked, handing Herbert the cloak back. Herbert didn't answer immediately. He took the cloak and hung it on a peg, and frowned at Kieran for a moment before drawing a breath and blowing it away heavily. His name is Rixian. He's Lord Lawrence's nephew, he said, and stepped into the bathroom. The Merc's nephew? The Merc's nephew was half-elven? Kieran followed Herbert at a distance. He didn't trust him, and he disliked being in a room alone with him. But at the same time, since the merchant lord called him his guest, Herbert hadn't laid a hand on him, and he'd been very polite. Unnervingly polite. At the moment, he stood across the bathroom, lying out soft towels beside a tub made of solid copper. He turned on the tap, and the clean water began pouring down the drain. And then, miracle of miracles, steam began rising off the fountain. Kieran had been a child the last time he'd seen a hot water tap. It was before wasting cough came to Glessenmore before his parents got sick, before his father died and his business partner stole everything they had. It was a happier era. He caught a glimpse of himself in the mirror as he waited for Herbert to move. It had been ages since he'd seen himself in a real mirror, a whole different life even. The man looking back at him now was a wraith. He was too thin. His cheeks had sunken. He had flakes of something in his hair and a smudge of brown on his jaw and four or five bruises visible on his throat now. There's soap by the tub here, Herbert gestured in that direction, but Kieran couldn't look away from his reflection. Do I really look like him? The tub continued running water through the drain. Herbert laid some fresh towels out, and for a moment Kieran thought he was going to ignore him altogether. Then he sighed and frowned at him. Lord Hawtrey's a poncy little man, but he's not a liar, Herbert said, and he swore by every god and every star he saw Rixian go off into a filthy inn with a sailor and he wasn't the first one to swear Rixie and Dulaith was begging on the tower docks. Heat rose across Kieran's cheeks, and he blushed to the tips of his ears. He'd never felt filthier in his life. And Herbert stood there, looking down at him like he'd never seen anything filthier either. My purpose going to the docks this morning was either to bring that scruffy brat back home by his pointed ear, or else to find out who was ruining his good name and end those rumours one way or another, Herbert said. And before you ask, yes. When I first saw you on the dock, I had a small heart attack for a moment, thinking you might actually be him. And would you have snatched him the same way? Kieran asked, crossing his arms. Damned right I would, Herbert snapped. I swore to his father I'd keep after him, and I mean to. Then where is he? Ain't your business, Herbert grumbled. You'll probably want to soak for a minute and then scrub. Drain the water and scrub again. You have shit in your hair. Kieran glared at him. I may or may not have lice in my hair, but I do not have shit in my hair. I'll fetch a doctor to see what can be done about that, Herbert said. Now, you can fix the water to whatever temperature you like, and you don't need to worry about the hot water running out. Not at this time of day, anyway. I'm going to find Frith and see about fresh clothes. Leave the ones you're wearing on the floor. Herbert drew a dressing screen around Kieran in the tub and left the room without another word. It had been a hell of a day, and he wasn't sure what in Eelrahir's name was going on. His mother had started to hope again, but she was still frightened and strangling with anxiety. He sent her his love over the line in the mixed hope and confusion that he felt. She responded with her own. Kieran stripped down and stepped into the running water. 
It was hot, and he adjusted the water a little cooler before he began scrubbing himself. He let the water drain through the tub, washing as much of the grime away as he could. He scrubbed his hair as well as he was able. He cleaned the filth away and filled the tub for the first time. It was brown and cloudy before it was full. He scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. He drained the tub and filled it again and scrubbed some more. Kieran spent most of his attention and a large portion of the bar of soap on his hair. Hair was important to elves in a way that humans didn't understand. It was a sign for longevity, peace, and health. It was a sacred symbol, especially to those who revered Ilri here like Kieran did. He had done his best to keep it clean, but there was only so much that could be done on the streets. He was lucky to keep it from matting. He was concerned that the doctor would get there, take one look at his scalp, and cut all his hair off in the name of cleanliness. He'd fight tooth and nail to avoid that if he had to, but it'd be best to try and get it as clean as possible before the doctor arrived. A tap came on the door before he was quite ready to present his hair to the doctor, but when it opened, it only opened a few inches. Mr. Hare, a woman's voice with a fine accent called, I'm Madame Letta Frith, the Merrick's steward. I'll be your point of contact for your material needs while you remain Lord Lawrence's guest. She didn't open the door, but she spoke through the gap. Thank you, Kieran said. The Merrick has, of course, invited you to an informal dinner, and would like to extend an invitation to your mother and any other immediate relations for which you're responsible. May I have their names and locations so I may send a carriage? There's only my mother. Her name is Latria Indrathail. We stay at the fourth tenement on Ethelfred's Tower. If she's not home, are there other locations we should check? She's never far from our room. She's been quite sick lately. Someone will know where she is, Kieran said. Thank you, Mr. Hare. I'll have a carriage sent for her immediately. The doctor has arrived to see you. Shall I send him in? Kieran sighed, thinking about his hair. Yes, thank you. If you have any need, let someone know and I'll see that it's provided. Have a good afternoon, Mr. Hare, Madame Frith said, and he heard her step away. A moment later, there was another tap on the door, and the doctor entered. And bless Ilra here, he was half-elven as well. My name is Dr. Olastral. Sir Herbert mentioned you were concerned you may have head lice. Kieran was immediately extremely relieved and extremely humiliated. A half-elf with the name Olastral would surely understand his desire to keep his hair at all costs. But Kieran's mother was an Indrathale from the house of Olastral, so they were probably also cousins by some degree or other, and Kieran was an ungodly, wretched mess. This was worse than when he'd admitted to whoring in front of the merchant lord. Dr. Lastra looked him over while the water drained and refilled. He asked him questions about his diet and lifestyle, and said he'd have the staff bring him some bread and soup, and warned him about eating rich foods for a little while. It'll taste divine at first, but then you'll be sick as a dog. Light foods to begin with. There will still be rich foods when your stomach has gotten used to them again. Then he cleaned a couple of scratches, offered some salve for his bruises, and applied a paste to Kieran's hair to kill the lice. That was also the point that the doctor began to try and riddle out how they were related. It didn't take too long to find a common relative, and after a little math, the doctor decided they were second cousins once or twice removed. Having family here didn't make the shame of his lifestyle any better. While it was sitting, he offered to shave Kieran's face for him, as Kieran's hands were too shaky, and he had a scruffy two-day look. After that, he combed through the paste with a fine comb, removing corpses of dead head lice that made Kieran sick with shame. And that was when the doctor asked the awful question. I've noticed you're uncomfortable with the state of your hair, cousin. May I ask about your religious beliefs? And worse than everything, worse than admitting to whoring, worse than actually whoring, they'd spoken in Scalic exclusively. But when the doctor asked that question, he asked it in Illyrian. Kieran's stomach turned, and it felt like ripping his heart out. But Kieran managed to whisper, I revere ear here. Ah, I understand, he said, drawing the comb and flakes of dead bugs from Kieran's hair. Then the doctor changed his approach. He combed Kieran's hair again and gathered it into sections. It wasn't until Kieran felt the pen wiggling through his hair that he realized what the doctor was doing. Elves had no temples. They only had rituals and rites to honor the Feldesir. The doctor took the part of priest and sectioned Kieran's hair out into five parts and began following Ilrihu's pattern for cleansing. And Kieran sat in the filthy water of the tub and cried as the doctor cleansed the filth from his hair. Once the doctor was satisfied the bugs were out of Kieran's hair, he rinsed the remaining paste out, shampooed his hair again, emptied the tub and filled it again. 
He rinsed Kieran's hair once more to be sure the water was running clear, and took a vial of elven hair oil from his bag. Kieran, son of Alastro, the doctor spoke in Illyrian once more as he poured the oil over Kieran's hair. He who plays the silver harp will teach you. He who sings the eternal songs will guide you. He who wields the stars is your father. He who knows all hearts has made you clean and restored you to himself and his people. He spoke Ilrahir's blessing, and Kieran sniffled as the sweet perfume rolled down the length of his hair. The doctor and priest worked the oil through the entire length of Kieran's hair. A tap sounded on the door. Doctor, Miss Indrathale has arrived and will be waiting for you in her room, Frith's voice called. The doctor finished another pass to be sure every strand was coated from root to tip. Wherever you travel, Kieran Ara Olastral, go in peace and dignity. The doctor finished the blessing in Illyrian before he stood and turned toward the door. Thank you, Madam Steward, he said, now in Scalic again. I'll attend her shortly. I'm finishing up with Mr. Hare. The doctor washed his hands in the sink and then gathered his apothecary. Tell her I'm all right, Kieran said. Sir Herbert scared me earlier, and she was frightened. The doctor smiled and nodded. I'll assure her that you are safe and as healthy as can be expected with your lifestyle, he said. I'll check with you again after dinner, Suiril. And with that, the doctor drew the screen back around the bath and left the room. Kieran rested in the clean hot water and let the oil rest in his hair. It smelled like eucalyptus and sandalwood, and it reminded him of his father somehow. It had been years since he'd really felt clean, and he relished it. Kieran stayed in the bath until Herbert came back. Your lunch is ready, and I've got you some clothes to try on. I've had to guess your sizes, so you'll have to let me know what fits and what doesn't, Herbert said from the other side of the screen. With that, Kieran rinsed the oil from his hair and was pleased to see the water running clear and clean. He dried off with a soft, warm towel and waited as Herbert passed him articles of clothing over the top of the screen. The first item he was expecting was a pair of canvas pants. It wasn't. It was a pair of fine cambric linen small clothes. The second piece was a soft pair of fine silk corduroy pants, which was quickly followed by a cambric shirt, a silk vest, and a corduroy jacket. His father had been a textile merchant before Wasting Cough took him. Kieran had spent every moment at his side since he was old enough to eat solid foods, learning the trade, memorizing prices, doing his best impression of his father's business phrases to his parents' amusement and delight. The fine fabrics of the clothes he had been brought reminded him of those days. It also made him keenly aware that they were far too fine for him. The jacket by itself was too much. For the price of the jacket alone, he and his mother could live like kings for a month, or they could live comfortably for three. Kieran found himself in crisis, wrapped in a towel in the finest castle in the north of Kingside. He decided he couldn't possibly wear the clothes that had been brought to him, but his old clothes were gone, perhaps to be washed, perhaps to be burned, depending on the sensibilities of whoever had taken them. For a ridiculous moment, he considered whether or not he could eat wrapped in a towel, but decided that wasn't acceptable. A couple dozen strangers on the docks had seen him nude, or mostly nude, over the last month. So far, the only person who'd seen him entirely nude at the castle was the doctor, and he'd like to keep it that way, if at all possible. "'Let me know if it doesn't fit,' Herbert said. "'I've got larger and smaller sizes of everything that matters. Pants, jacket, vest, etc.' Kieran took a breath and smelled the perfume in his hair, and remembered Ilrahir's blessing, and how good it was to feel clean again. So he began to dress in the fine clothes he'd been given." He tried them on, found the pants were a little loose and a little long, and Herbert handed him another pair which were a little smaller and an even finer textile. Then the jacket was a little tight in the shoulders. Herbert traded it out for another one. Soon Kieran had black corduroy pants, a fine white cambric shirt, a purple silk vest, a wine-colored velvet jacket, warm woolen socks, and a fine pair of tooled leather boots. The cravat was O'Lyrian gossamer. His mother used to have a gossamer dress, She used to dance, and it would make her look like she was floating and flying. They'd sold it ages ago to pay back debts to the court from trying to get his father's business back. It had broken her heart to let it go, but they both had to give up things that were dear to them so they could stay together. Kieran finished dressing and stepped out from behind the screen. Herbert looked him up and down with a smirk. Well, damn, you look halfway respectable now. Kieran tried to avoid reacting, but Herbert's smirk turned amused nonetheless. There's a comb by the mirror. Brush your hair out and come get your food. Frith's waiting. And with that, Herbert left him. Kieran took a long breath to steady himself and caught the scent of something delicious in the other room. 
He couldn't mess this up. He didn't even know what this was, but he couldn't mess it up. He took the comb with shaking hands and ran it through his hair to make it straight. By the time it made it through the length, his hair was somehow dry. It took a moment before he realized that the comb was magic. The comb. He'd been left alone in a room with a magic comb. How much did that thing cost? It was a comb. This was the kind of thing that could be accidentally misplaced or put in a pocket and forgotten and found months later. He glanced at his incredulous expression, as if to find someone else who understood how lavishly expensive everything in this castle actually was. His reflection was as incredulous as he was, but his reflection didn't seem to be in awe of the splendor. His reflection was a nobleman wearing silks and velvets and cambric, and he was probably judging him for gawking at the comb. Pish posh, the reflection said. It's a comb, not an enchanted mirror. Kieran rolled his eyes at the reflection and stepped away. There was food on the table, and his mother was here somewhere, and at some point in the evening he was going to talk to the Merrick of Elderfrey about a job. There was a lot to do. There were two people in the other room, Sir Herbert and a tall woman he assumed must be Madame Frith. She was human and looked to be somewhere in her mid-forties, with blonde hair swept back in an elegant but no-fuss bun. She wore a smart coat and trousers, with boots that rose to her knee. Everything about her looked practical and methodical, yet somehow there was a softness about her she couldn't quite put a finger on. Both looked over when he entered the room. The woman froze and blinked in shock for a moment. I told you, Herbert said with a sly grin. The woman cast him a sharp look for a moment before she turned with a smile to Kieran. Mr. Hare, it is a pleasure to meet you. I'm Madame Frith. It's good to meet you as well, Kieran said. Please forgive my reaction just now. Sir Herbert said the resemblance was uncanny, but I wasn't quite prepared, Frith said kindly. The look on your face, Herbert chuckled. Frith frowned at him. Thank you, Sir Garris. I can't wait to see Dare's expression. He's gonna die, Herbert said. Anyway, food's on the table, lad. Have at. The table was set with a bowl and a tureen of steaming soup with a loaf of bread, a dish of butter, and some cheeses on a plate. Kieran's mouth watered, and his first instinct was to dive in on the feast laid on the table, but he managed to maintain his dignity and seat himself at the table like he had some manners that weren't taught by his acting troupe. Now, if Sir Garris can contain his glee for a minute, I imagine you have some questions, Mr. Hare? Frith asked. Kieran took a spoon of the soup, which appeared to be some kind of creamy chicken soup with potatoes and corn, and he didn't care what else. It smelled amazing. He swallowed so as to avoid drooling and looked up at Frith and Herbert politely. "'I heard my mother was here.' Frith nodded. "'She's arrived. I welcomed her about twenty minutes ago. He could wait a moment longer to eat. "'May I see her?' "'Of course. Dr. Lastrell is with her at the moment, but as soon as he's satisfied and she's had a chance to get cleaned up and changed, you'll be free to see one another,' Madame Frith said kindly. "'That meant it'd be a while before she was available.' Kieran nodded and took a bite. He could eat a bowl of soup and then find her. The soup was heavenly. It was salty and creamy and flavorful, and it was all Kieran could do to not drink it right out of the bowl or drip it on the borrowed clothes. I was going over a list of items which you are still in need of. Is there anything you require? The doctor mentioned do you revere Ilrihir. Do you need religious hair accoutrements? It was a thoughtful question. He had a driftwood hair stick at their apartment and a few scavenged shells his mother had fashioned into a lace that he'd wear on holy days. But the next of those was a full month away, and they'd be too much of a reminder of how unworthy he was to wear the fine clothes he'd been given. "'No, thank you,' Kieran said quietly, between bites of heavenly chicken broth from Escathera. "'All he's got is what's on his back. He'll need everything,' Herbert said. Frith made a note. "'I'll see to that. Other things? Necessities? Handkerchiefs? Combs? Razors? Cologne?' "'I think I'll be fine,' Kieran said meekly. Night clothes, travelling clothes, a couple sets of daily wear clothes, house shoes, walking boots, hair ornaments, some of that fancy hair oil that Varlathan likes, Herbert listed. Frith nodded. A winter coat, a cloak? A good one, Herbert agreed. I'll see to it, Frith said. Do you drink, lad? Herbert asked. Kieran shuffled. Not lately. That's a different list, Frith said, turning a page. What are your favourite beverages? A good brown beer? Kieran offered carefully. He wasn't sure if it was too much to ask for a beer, but it had been months since they'd had money to waste on non-essentials. Frith made a note. Any preference to red or white wine? No. And what liquors do you prefer? I like whiskey and Eloran, he offered. Excellent, she said. What about teas? 
Is there more than one kind? Yes, Frith said simply, making another note. Kieran nodded and sipped more of his soup. The best he'd had to eat lately had been day-off vegetables and half-molded bread. The doctor mentioned a diet he'd like you to have for the time being. Do you have any allergies or religious or moral constraints to your diet that we should be aware of? No, Kieran said. She nodded and made another note, then tore a couple of pages from the book and gave them to Herbert. See that to the kitchen and these two to my aid, please. Herbert gave a half-bow and left the room. Kieran sipped his soup. He wasn't sure what just happened or what to say in reaction to it, so he stayed quiet. "'May I join you at the table, Mr. Hare?' Madame Frith asked. "'Of course,' he said, confused at the formality. Madame Frith took the seat across from him and flipped her book open to another page. "'The doctor told me that you mentioned that Sir Herbert had frightened you earlier. Your mother seemed upset as well when I welcomed her. Sir Herbert is gone for the moment, and I wanted to check with you. Would you like to discuss what happened?' Kieran blinked, frozen for a moment. He didn't want to risk making Herbert angry, and it seemed as if the trouble they had was relating to Kieran making the nephew look bad. Which, Yildur here, help, how was he going to talk with the Merc knowing he was making his nephew look bad? No, I'm fine, Kieran said, and before he could quite stop himself. Just, Sir Herbert is... I'm confused by Sir Herbert. Frith smiled and nodded in something that looked like agreement. He's a singular individual. He is safe, right? Kieran asked. Sir Herbert is no danger to you as long as you are Lord Dulaith's guest. He threatened to break both my legs and throw me in the bay, Kieran said. Gods, that does sound like him, unfortunately. When did that occur? Frith asked, making a note in her book. Kieran had a lump in his throat. That was before we got to the castle. We were on the docks. Frith sighed. On behalf of Lord Dulaith, I sincerely apologise for Sir Herbert's behaviour. As a guest of Lord Lawrence, I promise you will have no further problems with Sir Herbert. I cannot remove him from your care, as the Merrick assigned him to you, but if at any point you do not feel safe, I would ask you to call for me and I will handle the situation immediately. There is a bell here that you can pull to call me. She gestured to a cord by the door that disappeared into the ceiling. Thank you, Kieran said. Do you have any further needs or any questions that I can answer? Frith asked. Where is Lord Delaith's nephew? Kieran asked quietly. Did something happen to him? The man who mistook me for him earlier said Lord Delith was worried about him. Ah, Frith nodded. Lord Rixian is currently away from the family holdings. You needn't worry for him, though. He's quite well. Lord Lawrence's concerns are mainly to do with him being outside his immediate vision and continuing complications related to his wasting cough. He has wasting cough? Kieran asked. He suffers wasting malaise periodically. You must be familiar with that. Kieran nodded. My mother is sick right now. Frith looked thoughtful. She looked a little pale when she arrived. The doctor should be almost done speaking with her by now. I should make sure she has everything she needs. Is there anything else you require? Frith asked. Can I go see her? Kieran asked. If you've finished eating, of course you may. I can escort you, Frith said, standing. Kieran looked over the table once more, and though he could eat more, his mother still felt anxious and concerned. He took a small wedge of cheese and rose with Frith and followed her to meet his mother. Frith walked him down the hall to her room, which wasn't very far from his own. His mother was sitting on a couch in a new autumn orange silk dress. Her hair was washed and clean and hanging free around her shoulders. She was wearing mascara and a little color on her lips and cheeks, and she looked a hundred years younger than she had that morning. She hugged him tightly and wept into the shoulder of the borrowed coat for a long while. The doctor eventually excused himself. Frith spoke with the woman who appeared to be waiting on his mother and followed the doctor to get some new notes. The waiting maid lingered quietly in the corner, and Kieran and his mother went to the table and shared a bountiful meal. He answered her questions about what had happened carefully, and in Illyrian. He didn't want to upset her more than necessary, and before he was finished relating everything, Sir Herbert arrived quietly. His mother caught the uneasy feeling in Kieran's chest when Herbert came in. Herbert, for his part, offered a half-bow to them, then, without a word, arranged himself in a chair with a deck of cards, playing solitaire. After a couple of games by himself, he invited the ladies' maid to join him for a card game, and they began something that looked like a friendly rivalry. Kieran and his mother spent the next couple hours talking, mostly in Illyrian, which seemed neither Herbert nor the maid understood. If they did speak Illyrian, neither of them reacted to anything they said. The stolen moments were almost paradise. The room was warm, his mother was cleaner and looked more like herself than she had in years. 
She was obviously fatigued, but if he tried a little, it was like she wasn't sick at all. The makeup had brought some color back to her face, and even in her malaise, she wasn't twitching at every small movement. She wasn't shivering with a threadbare shawl wrapped around her shoulders. She wasn't coughing blood every minute. Her breathing didn't sound labored or rattling. And when she did start coughing again, the maid called the doctor again, and he gave her some medicine, and the cough went away again. It was so simple. Some medicine, and the coughing stopped. If the merchant lord could offer him a job that could pay him enough to make sure she could have medicine, he'd take it. It didn't matter if it was shoveling shit in a sewer a mile under the city. His nervousness kept building as the light of the day began to fade. Eventually, a clock struck seven, and Herbert gathered his cards. Then or soon, I'll get you a cravat so you can be presentable. Kieran swallowed nervously. Thank you. Ain't nothing, Herbert said, stepping into the hallway. The maid refreshed his mother's makeup and chose a shade of dark red for her lips. She wrapped a fur stole around her shoulders and began gathering her hair back in a simple and lovely O'Lyrian style. While she was working, Kieran's mother gestured for him to come to her so that she could fix his hair. She braided the top half and gathered it into a bun and borrowed some pins to secure it. It was simple, but it was one of the few rituals they had left from better times. Herbert arrived as she was finishing setting the pins. "'Do you know how to tie a cravat?' Herbert asked. "'No, I never learned,' Kieran said, standing. Herbert gestured to him and looped the gossamer around his neck. It made Kieran nervous, and he felt a little choked, but Herbert quickly tied the cravat and stepped back. "'Took the length under the vest. The mark's waiting.' Finally dressed, Kieran took his mother's hand and followed Herbert down the hall to dinner with the wealthiest man in Ethelfell.